Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zinger Show with me, your host Agassino Zinger and this is episode number 379, that's 379 of the Agassino Zinger Show, thank you boss for joining me. Does that even sound make sense? Thank you so much for joining me. Whatever that word was, I meant to say thank you so much for joining me. If it's your first time watching the show, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five star review, download the show, share it with your friends, stick it in the back of your shoes when you're running away. Someone can chase you and say, Hey, you got a tissue on your shoe. They pick it up and they realize that's my show and do all of that nice stuff. It's much, much appreciated. Um, yeah, what's updates? Updates so far. Um, I've got a pop shield now, so if you're listening or watching via YouTube, you should hear no more pops on the microphone. Um, it's a little bit big, it's a little bit on the chunkier side. It's absolutely protruding straight up into the back of my throat, but it is what it is, you know. I've got good gag reflexes, so we keep it moving. But apart from that, nothing else has changed. We have um, a 10 p.m. curfew now in the UK. We had these really funny pictures or videos going viral the other day of um, a whole host of people just, you know, literally pouring out into the streets at 10 p.m. because, of course, all the bars closed at that time. So whatever the solution or whatever the rationale was behind closing the pubs early to reduce people mingling, as they say in the UK here, right? That's a new, uh, that's the new phrase. We have all these new phrases that everyone just sort of adopted into their lexicon, right? We had, um, what was it, new normal for a start, right? That was a bit annoying. Everyone now, you know, talking like, you know, I don't know how they're talking. It just didn't make any sense. Now suddenly mingling is one of the words that we're now overusing uh, during these tough times. But yeah, it was just funny seeing so many people out in the streets all at once, um, which you could have guessed in it. You could have guessed if you close the bars early, people aren't just going to go home, right? They're going to obviously stay out and try to enjoy as much of the night as they can, especially during these times. Like this is, It's been a very interesting way to see how people have approached it. Obviously as citizens and mostly as a government, in terms of not really understanding people's pain points, right? Imagine all the strife everyone's going through economically or as a family unit. Um, you could imagine, you could understand why some people would want to kind of, you know, black out and sort of like forget about things and go out and have a good time. You can understand why what people would want to just go out and meet other people and just be around strangers just so they can take their mind off things. You can understand it. So for the government not to sort of like work with that industry, especially hospitality, to figure out what is the best option, solution going forward has been a bit of an issue, especially when you think about the evidence and the data so far doesn't show us or illustrate that, you know, so far that COVID is causing any more uptick in cases. We haven't really seen evidence pointing towards that. If anything, if you believe some of the numbers out there, I've seen numbers of 5 to 10% being banded around in terms of the amount of people that are getting COVID through the hospitality um, industry. But that's where remember as a bar, a restaurant, or whatever it may be, um, that's not where it's actually, you know, birthing from. And I guess at the time now, because science isn't exact and it's just difficult to get a grip on this thing, it seems like listening to all the experts, everyone's had a, having a hard time figuring out what exactly is going wrong and who's approaching it the right way. Even the countries that are doing it the best, there's no real learnings that can be made for it, especially when you include human beings in it. People aren't robots, so people and people aren't the same the world around. Who would have guessed it? Like people aren't the same. But yeah, we're all different. So you can't really um you can't really look at what New Zealand done anyway and try to adopt it here because we're just not the same people. We go about things differently, different life experiences. There's just, you know, especially if you look at London, it's so multicultural, um, it's so hustle and bustly, it's really expensive to live here. So people are just, you know, they're worried about making sure people within their own household are safe, you know, they're not really that bothered about being, you know, uh, a great what you call it community member or having any sort of civil civic responsibility it's just about making sure that their kids don't die and that they have warm clothes to put on their backs in it that's about it everything else is like an, is a bonus we'll let that police car go by um yeah everything else is a bonus for most people i think so it's kind of hard to even learn any lessons from countries that have kind of dealt with this thing better and um maybe just some countries are just set up better to deal with stuff like this and it just is what it is i don't think that can be excused i think maybe the part that you know maybe i'd think of um i don't know maybe we're probably adept to kind of dealing with terrorist attacks right because of how individualistic life is here in london right you can sort of like get you can you could you could you could easily go about a year doing your thing in london without any of your friends checking up on you making sure you're okay it literally you could go for a year even if you had a good social group of friends you could literally go a year without your friends actually seeing you in person and it not be an issue <coughs> sorry they might text you they'll contact you they might text you and say hey what's up uh, bud you want to come here but you could literally put them off for a year and no one would ask a question about hey what's wrong with that guy in it what's wrong with that like, how come he ain't come out in ages no one would come up and check on you you could just be left completely on your own so that might help in terms of terrorism attacks because you know that 
stiff upper lip comes in that stiff British upper lip comes in where you know you have to kind of get on with it and move on we probably have the aptitude for that especially in London we have that because everyone's just you know literally have to you have to do what you have to do to keep the lights on but yeah man it's been concerning it's been very very concerning to see how we've sort of dealt with this stuff as a nation but you know I think we were of it was poor obvious that I was on the cards in it but that's been about it really Tempe and curfew hasn't really worked but again it's not real time to sort of judge it we need to kind of let things kind of play out and maybe this might be a bit of a genius move you just would have hoped they would have made more of a forceful attempt to do this in the beginning but hey we're where we are now let's hope things get better for the long run going forward but anyway jam pack show for you today loads of interesting stuff to talk about loads of topics to get through loads of um uh very uh spicy things to get through as well actually so grab a drink whatever you're having i've got i don't really have it it's finished <laughs> i was gonna bring a bottle of water but i don't have a bottle of water if i did i'd drink it whatever you have sip it drink it eat it crack it open and let's sit back and enjoy it so first thing on the docket right now to get through um unfortunately we have another um casualty of covid a nightclub in peckham called caverners uh pool club um a basically a converted pool club has been turned into a bit of a nightclub a bit of an after hours haunt for some of the um hipster arty uh crew down in south and again one of my more favorite place to go to especially in south it's a bit of a trek to get to from where i am but in general it's a very very great spot it's a it's a very cool spot it's probably there is no comparison to a cavernous i can't think of uh, sorry a cannabis a cannabis kind of how you even pronounce it in london i can think maybe apart from fs and i used to be around and i repeat to fs too we have a really good subculture that actually these weird sort of like pool clubs that have been turned into nightclubs because i guess they have uh, by default, they have late licenses, right? They're allowed to serve drinks really until basically the early hours of the morning. They're probably not set up to be a nightclub because it's really sp sparsely spread out. Of course, to accommodate the pool tables. Um, they usually have a pretty shitty sound system. The drinks on tap aren't really the best, but the bartenders are usually great. Security is usually really fun, you know, as fun as security can be. And it just generally attracts a pretty decent crowd. So it's a real shame to see uh, Kevin's Pool Club suffer by but you know with the new curfew coming in you knew some spots that were just hanging on for dear life or going to fall by the wayside i said it prior i think some industry some businesses are just hanging on for dear life and if any other kind of restrictions maybe above from a curfew like another lockdown and maybe a, a, a sort of like industry specific lockdown maybe looking at different type of industries and saying hey this place has too many points of human contact we have to close down for a period of time i think it's going to cause a lot of businesses to go out our business so unfortunate but you know i guess this is kind of the nature of the game at the moment and again a really great club that should have probably been support i, can, I can't imagine a place that kind of just takes that much money to really keep it running right again much money in comparison to other clubs so it's a real shame that they want any grants any uh bursaries any help any assistance in place for them to tap into so they can keep their doors open again because i think you know part of the beauty of peckham in that area isn't you know all these new spanky glittery skyscrapers going out gentrifying the area because you know gentrification i think has its place you know some places it's unavoidable it is what it is but it needs to be a balance you know for all the you know glass uh erections that you're sticking up all over the place you need to balance it out with some you know grotty you know diy sort of like real places like record stores like clubs like art supply stores bookstores whatever they are that are made by the local community they need to stay as well as do the you know these new skyscrapers and they need to act a bit of balance because i don't i don't i wouldn't imagine if you are some oligarch that's buying a flat for your daughter in the middle of peckham part of the reason why she wants to move there is because she's heard of rye wax right she doesn't want to go there and then suddenly there's no rye wax but there's another i don't know um there's another fucking pret a manger and eat around the corner that's not what she's coming there for do you know what i mean so that's the real issue they don't strike a balance but anyway this article from resident visor says cannabis peckham pool club will close tonight after the uk's uh new covid19 job support scheme fails nightlife so this is from Friday. It says, um, with uh, the continuity here says, Cameron's Pool Club will close for good tonight at 10 p.m. Again, look how great that looks from the outside, queuing up, just walking past that. You'd probably miss it, right? A small, narrow door. Um, you walk through the hallway and then bam, you enter this massive, massive for the, what it is, sort of poor arena with a DJ booth in the corner, a great bar, and just a, generally a good crowd. Like, you're losing a real, real... Um, hallmark i think of south london and what peckham's really about in that sense um owner kieran canava um, announced on facebook thursday evening that the right lane venue would close its doors for the last time on friday the 25th of september 
I'm maddening, man. Referencing the new COVID-19 related curfew on bars and pubs. Um, this is, I guess, his post. Let's read a bit of it here. He said, uh, let's get this out of the way. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see, can I read it more here? Let's well, read the article, actually. Um, it says, yeah, with no help from the government and after having talks with the landladies, they're refusing to reduce the rent until the virus is dealt with. Wrote Cannavals, who took over the venue in 2011 and made it a nightlife destination. So, um owners are refusing to reduce the, the rent i can understand again own i think there has been a there's been a bit of a push i think in the states with this where this there's been this like weird war against landlords i don't see why that's the thing right most landlords from my experience are you know fairly what working class middle class people right they're just trying to make a buck they're just trying to make a living for their family um i don't think that's an issue um i think they were well within their rights not to reduce rents i don't think it's their problem their issue that covid is happening there might be a bit of an agreement in terms of you know maybe pausing rent for a couple of months and allowing you to sort of like make up the arrears as you go on but the understanding that they're going to reduce the rent for what a virus doesn't really make much sense so i definitely get them on that on that side of things i think this is where the government steps in and assist these small businesses that kind of make up the overall dna of a particular location especially when you're looking at what nightlife brings to the whole london economy there needs to be an understanding that you know for as little as it takes a runner kind of ours look at the net benefit it, it has to the entire community and to the entire ecosystem of that street right i can only imagine a place that kind of is it probably allows people to go to off licenses across the road and buy a drink to keep the party going or maybe to pre-drink whatever it may be all of these little businesses suffer because kind of is closes so it's not even just the fact that the place closes it's the net negative of not having that place there that attracts people to go to other institutions chicken shops wherever they are are definitely going to see a dip in sales because kind of us is closing so that's the issue at hand there um it says it continues on um i cannot afford to pay three months rent in advance in this situation after paying my rent every quarter on the time for the past 10 years this is very pill hard pill swallow but such is life of course said as you know we are a nightclub and only get busy after 10 p.m of course there is no way i can survive he said cannabis hosted a mix of student events and club nights and most notably was the first home to local party and eventful label rhythm section lead father bradley zero pay tribute to the place here so yeah um, that's i've been there so many times i've been there for student nights i've been there for an open decks thing i've been there for club nights it's really legitimately one of the better places to go to it has so much character um again it's different from any other part of the uk i think london is especially especially south is definitely like that it has a a particular sort of feel and vibe towards it um the people that party out there generally don't go anywhere else as well so it has a very tribal aspect to it but again i just love the uh, the programming they tend to always book friends and family as opposed to east i think maybe that's just my point of view but i get the feeling that in east or in any other part of london they tend to book a lot of big names to come in and play but i think south sort of like keeps to their own and um, that might be because they've got record stores and all that stuff around there so there is maybe a more of a tendency to sort of reach out to those people to get them to play but i've definitely have a, had a much better time going to random nights i had no idea who's playing in south than i had done it anywhere else in london you can definitely trust if you go to any club night in south london you're definitely gonna you know be um you're definitely gonna be entertained by a fairly prominent very very adept very able uh very talented djs playing you know various types of music definitely won't disappoint you um continues here says as the club closure news club closure news was shared yesterday evening the clear it's clear that Kevin's mention of no help from the government is referencing chancellor Riss, uh reshi sunak's Thursday announcement about the uk government's new job support scheme and its furlough and self-employed schemes come to an end next month sunak says the next couple of phases which hinges on the government covering 20 percent of the wages for workers who fulfill one third of their contract hours over six months is aimed at retaining what he calls viable jobs we need to create new opportunities and allow the economy to move forward and that means appointing people in viable jobs which provide genuine security sunak said on thursday when pressed on what viable job is sunak said it's not for me to sit here and make pronouncements about exactly what job is viable or not but what we do need to do is to evolve our support now so that we are through the acute phase of this crisis i believe it is right thing to do not to concentrate that support on jobs that have a genuine prospect blah blah, blah the creative nighttime industry which has fairly been um, which has largely been unable to operate since March as the government pandemic regulates has not allowed uh, nightclubs, venues or live music spaces to reopen without major changes. I denounce the government's lack of extended support. Um, and yeah, that's been the, that's been a pretty um, 
interesting part of this right i guess we always kind of knew especially in the uk we kind of had an understanding just from what happened especially when they pulled all the late licenses from kings and road when i used to promote back back in the day and you saw the changes in shoreditch and you saw those changes and just the clubs nationwide you definitely got the feeling that as a nation we don't really give a shit or the government doesn't really give a shit about nightlife right as much money as it brings into the uk it's a bit of a it's a bit of a um it's it's kind of we're kind of tolerated right they tolerate clubs being around but they don't necessarily encourage them um expanding growing sustaining what's there they just if a, if a club dies it is what it is they don't really make much of a fuss about it um they don't go out of their way to support anyone that's on the you know on the ropes and if anything it's just mostly a testament to the owners and to the local community that supports these places that they're still open they have no assistance no help no direction not even direction no assistance no help from the government at all then of course um what's his face uh got a night czar um appointed a night czar for london you know just copying similar things that's happening across europe in terms of having somebody as a point of contact someone your voice to speak for the nightlife industry in you know in the house of parliament you know in these big meetings where decisions are made and this amy lammy woman has been pretty useless you know since the first time she's got in there. i don't know what she's done since she's been in there um she doesn't necessarily seem like somebody that's really of the culture that's of the scene i've never seen her out i have no, no think she's associated with any of the club nights that i go to and anyone that has been to some prominent club nights and she just definitely hasn't really had her finger on the pulse and again it might be a limitations of her role it might be because she doesn't necessarily have the knowledge of it but regardless that night czar thing that was we were led to believe it was going to be a way for the nightlife industry to have some security and knowing that there was somebody out there fighting for them hasn't necessarily materialized she's been always on the back foot always sort of reactive as opposed to proactive and just been a generally pretty shit of her job um but that's kind of standard par of course for somebody in government um so i guess it comes here she tweeted it here and said the chancellor's announcement today does not go far enough to uh, support the value of jobs in london struggling in that life so sadiq khan and i will continue to press the government on urgent sector specific support to help save the business of in the new london yeah cool but her job should be in question as well isn't it once this whole thing does settle isn't it she's done literally nothing going forward but hey she's just paying lip service there we continue says the nighttime industry association the ntia chief executive michael keel also decried a uh, sunak scheme in an op-ed for i knew saying the chancellor has completely exile the entire nighttime sector he said the current new measures clearly only consider businesses that are open and operating either fully or limited capacity what use are tax measures and extended support for working staff when you're not allowed to open it's true and that's a real issue again i think much like um it's funny right they're they're willing to have schools reopen i guess because they're viable and more important than nightclub fair enough but the fact that there's schools and universities reopened and you've seen people, you know, the cases of COVID ramping up. I think, you know, there's a story I've got here from Manchester, right, where Manchester Metropolitan University students forced into lockdown, right? And that's how, how is it? Up to 1,700 students are faced to isolate for 14 days, right? <laughs> Which is flipping insane. So they're willing to, like, let universities and schools open, knowing full well that people are going to get COVID and some people might die, right? Because that's, that's, the, that's the sort of bargaining you're having to do in government right now because you can't keep people locked down forever right you can't keep the end you can't keep the economy closed you have to get let people go back to work if you don't want to incur some long-term damages to the economy you're having to make some really tough decisions as to what's the number of cases or deaths you're willing to accept for the country to move on or to kind of you know get back to normal quote unquote and they're willing to do that with the schools but they're not willing to do that with the nightclubs interestingly enough knowing that nightclubs are probably in a better position to limit and maybe put into uh, practice some procedures that can mitigate for the cases going up right and there's also more pressure on nightclubs too they have actual skin in the game like they can't afford to just have cases and carry on Metro Metropolitan, Manchester Metropolitan can get away with having substandard lectures substandard you know facilities having people catching COVID left right and center and they're still going to get tens of thousands of kids applying next year to get into universities right universities are a bit of a scam that way they're not necessarily hold to the same um, business they're not really hold, hold to the same standard standards as a you know independent businesses which you know essentially live and die by the reputation of their uh, patrons that come into their place so if you go to a club and you don't necessarily feel safe they haven't really put they haven't made it covid secure you're definitely going to let your 
you're definitely gonna let it be known, right? And Scott definitely gonna damage that um nightclub going forward. They're gonna really suffer for it. So they really have to be on their game. So if anything, if there was a compromise to be reached apart of meeting people in the middle and saying, Hey, clubs can open, but if they're open within these strict um you know parameters it gives them a little bit of time to make some money to earn something because i think a lot of these places aren't really I, I think there's some places that would obviously like some support from the government whether it's a grant a bursary some sort of monetary support whatever it may be a pausing of rent an agreement with landlords whatever but i think for the most part most of these places just want the ability to run their business in some capacity so they have some income coming in the fact that they can entirely close just makes it unviable for I, I don't even know how some of these places are surviving i really don't because if you can't open at all you can't even do outdoor events what are you what are you in in this current in, in this current climate especially when you consider what the virus is right and how people have basically um you know convinced themselves that if you're in any sort of closed environment you're definitely going to get it how you'd meant to survive that's the issue at hand here, really. Um, it says the current um, news, uh, uh, the, it says that continuity to kill also urged the government to reconsider the 10 p.m. curfew. So now time current businesses have also been fairly targeted by a 10 p.m. curfew, which we believe has no specific, no scientific basis and will prevent business from building the necessary revenue to stay afloat. He says in July, the government announced a one of uh, 1.7 billion relief package for the arts and cultural segment, though it wasn't until the less art stance campaign by nightlife industry and community that it was clear clubs and festivals could be eligible for grants arts council england then led the application process for 300 million and the grant set aside the cultural organizations venues that receive the aid includes cortical studios earth fold soup kitchen and deaf institute and i guess it's a picture of the rhythm section people standing outside writing a eulogy um but yeah man sad state of affairs you know cannabis peck and pool club one of my favorite places to go to in london um again a real establishment a real kooky um off the wall sort of spot something different from the kind of you know um run-of-the-mill commercial clubs we have here in london and um the club scene again suffers in it at the back of this we're always the first to sort of suffer and the last to be considered really in this respect i guess it is what it is but hey sad to see it go man sad to see it go um we continue and yeah going on to the topic regarding Manchester metropolitan so this is a pretty interesting and breaking news right so i guess there is an understanding within some segments of the government that we're going to have to just get back to some level of normality we have to allow kids to go back to school i think education for the most part if if ever there was a uh a need to innovate right education would be the one i think now we've everyone's sort of realized that uh, you know for the most part whatever you're paying especially if you're taking your kids or putting your kids through private school or you know putting them in a pretty fairly swanky college or university period people are definitely seen the limitations of these places regardless of what you're paying they're not necessarily set up in a way to facilitate you know remote learning um kids don't really enjoy learning that way either especially when they're used to being on campus around their man around among their friends it, it just doesn't work so they have to reopen in some way shape and record and i guess you know part of it might be as well the mental health issue part of it right i think if you're a kid and you've been at home legitimately locked in place and you know abiding by the rules if you've been doing what the la youtube influencers have been doing just living life and getting tested every single day because that's the entertaining side of it isn't it in la they got all these like you know tiktok kids who are multi-millionaires just getting tested every day as if like it's like the equivalent of like you know um going raw on everyone that you meet right not putting any protection on whatsoever and you just get tested every day like just to make sure you don't have anything it's like it just you would you'd rather just like not do it or protect yourself than just run the risk of getting it just so you can carry on partying but hey whatever say la vie and of course universities as well interesting enough even though they get you know thousands sometimes millions of money every calendar year they don't have the facilities or the capabilities to have their own independent testing at university to ensure or routine testing that's safe to, in that respect to ensure people are um secure and safe right they just kind of you know just let it run a run a mock and then kind of um rectify the situation as is and manchester university is another proof of that um it says they're forced to um students to lock down right and it says yeah hundreds of university residents university students in manchester have been forced to self-isolate with immediate effect it says up to 1700 students will isolate for 14 days after 99 um at the university student tested positive for covid19 
students across the city have been urged to attend virtual freshers events and avoid big parties and you know i already played you that virtual freshers party it was really really depressing seeing all the kids separate on different tables limited capacity i think you know i think they had nearly maybe a quarter of the people that would attend the freshers people you know keeping away from each other and you know that's the complete opposite of university especially the first year it's all about touching strangers getting around people that you don't know uh, making friends um, and just being a bit of a loon in it that's what that's what university is about so to kind of have an experience where you go somewhere like that and you're meeting with new people from all different walks of life and you're having to avoid them it must be a weird experience especially for some of the more mature students right heading into uni there might be especially if you're at risk and you're starting uni and you're going somewhere you want to avoid a crowd which is odd because you're at university and then you're older because you don't want to put yourself at risk or anyone else at risk or you're having to avoid them too so it's doubly frustrating it continued to have said but some said they had no warning of a lockdown and are now trapped in halls for residents it says yeah imagine meeting imagine meeting what 1500 people and then you're trapped with them in your halls it's just horrible most parts of great manchester are subject to stricter restrictions after spiking his cases he says the city council said it was implementing a local lockdown to stop the transmission of the virus among students and prevent it from getting wider community the evidence so far suggests that transmission has been within the student community which is mad this is um the lockdown comes as students in scotland were told not to go to pubs parties or restaurants this weekend in a bit to stem the spat of virus outbreaks uh, but Joe Grady of the UCU University Staff Union said it was irresponsible of the universities to have flurry lowering students back into the bases they can have a social life at university and that they can have a face-to-face -face teaching students in the accommodation blocks at the Burley campus and at the Cambridge halls in Manchester are affected by the lowest lockdown latest lockdown uh, Megan Tiergay a student at Manchester Union said we are getting ready to go out and look out and secure and police to outside the halls they say we can't leave wow they got literally no warning we can't we haven't received any emails from the university about this and they seem to be holding Holding us against our will uh, my dad has been calling the university to try to find out what's going on that's insane they got police officers outside trapping them in their halls um at burley chip wilson 19 said um we have been told that we're not allowed to leave and if we do not come back and we uh, and if we do we cannot come back oh okay i see what they're saying so if you leave and go in part you can't come back to university for 14 days which of course takes you out of the calendar year and you know you lose a lot of teaching time especially in the first year you need to attend every single lecture man um, I think once you hit second year, you kind of find your stride, you know where to go, what lectures to go to, what notes to take, what lecture is piss poor, you, which one you could just get away with just reading the notes. But that first year, you need to attend every single lecture to make sure you're on the rhythm and on pace of what's going on. Um, she said, you know, I have to come back. So now we're all back inside. She said, we're all worried about how we will get food and how long this will last. We only got an email to say that it was happening and it was happening this evening. On top of that, all this, many of us have had COVID symptoms, but we cannot get tested jesus christ here we are only getting dry so they're all locked in their halls and some of them have got covid so they can't go out and get tests but they know they have it so you're having to suffer in silence on your own in your room surrounded by strangers like thousands of strangers you've just met um university spokesman said we are fully supportive of the lockdown decision services such as the well-being support and libraries and library will remain um available to students online imagine keeping people indoors but you're leaving a library open like students universities are so backwards our security teams will increase patrols to support the lockdown and we will take disciplinary action against any student found to have breached the requirements but imagine they let them back in God almighty, David Regan, a public health sector director at Manchester, said an important part of the Manchester local response and the prevention plan for the coronavirus is to keep the close eye on data and act swiftly and decisively where an outbreak is identified and to contain the virus. That's what we've done here. So, yeah, I guess they've had little to no option. But again, man, spare a thought for students out there. Isn't it? What a horrible time to be a student. Number one, you're having to stress um, associated with deciding whether not to go to university or not. Right then decided whether not to go during this time um then you finally decide to go make the brave step to go out there and then this is what happens you, you you get no prior warning to going into a local lockdown you're you know next door to somebody who has you know mild symptoms somebody that has aggressive system symptoms and you're none the wiser because they're not giving you much information and the university side of things it's all new territory for them right now. they vote they've just been used to collecting people's money leaving the doors open at a student um you know lecture hall and then she's keeping it moving so to suddenly be in a place now where they're having to be proactive and do something they've they've come they've come up one thing in it as part as as part of course with a lot of other institutions out there so yeah an entirely shitty situation to be in and again i don't envy anyone um that's in university now trying to you know handle this uh, pandemic it must be mad it must be absolutely mad i can just imagine it, what they're going through man like fuck me 
what a shit show what a shit show anyway talking about shit shows let's move on to Tory Lanez's new album Daystar has just released right um and it's caused a bit of controversy a little bit of um, controversy on the social media space um obviously because of what's uh led up to it you know the alleged shooting between Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion we haven't really got much details as to what's happened so far <clears throat> but it's been alleged or you know she directly said on her Instagram live Megan Thee Stallion that Tory Lanez shot her um you know during a dispute in a car about something and now we're in a position where people are essentially trying to cancel Tory Lanez for what he done because they're allegedly you know, obviously think that he was responsible for shooting a female which is you know is completely out of bounds shooting anybody um especially during an argument <clears throat> let alone a woman <clears throat> let alone somebody you're romantically involved in so it's all a bit of a shit show in that respect but from the onset it always seemed a bit fishy to me right the story i never really bought it um i guess because i've been following people like you know mob radio milagro Graham, so big up at her she's been reporting this in a very in in a very um journalistic way right she was really doing some investigative journalism taking in different sort of references and sources really reading people's words um you know um pulling resources from her local from her community who are awesome they're always on the right pages at the right time to screenshot the right things and send them through loads of receipts everywhere and generally just been asking a lot of questions as to megan sort of like standing in this case and how this is sort of you know erupted and i guess my initial response to this was to not to believe it just because from the fact of megan's character don't know the woman at all but just based on what i saw online and the debacle around her original record label deal and how she sort of spun it to make it seem like like she was coerced into signing a bad deal when the details of the deal did get leaked we found out it was a pretty standard record deal don't get me wrong very sh very one-sided deal that probably favors the label or favors the people that put the money in but it was un it wasn't anything uncommon in that deal that you wouldn't find in anybody else's deal that signed recently especially people that signed at atlantic and stuff like 360 deals exist they're part of the fabric of the music industry they're really bad you know record labels being able to take a, a part of your money from every avenue that you're involved in hence the term 360 from your touring to your merch to deals that you do outside of music they can obviously take a cut of it and that's obviously um very much no, it's probably not the best or fairest way to go about things but you know it is what it is so for megan and her team to purposely contort that story to make it seem like she was bullied or the patriarchy took control of her contract she wasn't given um agency and all this sort of stuff and then the flirting and then the initial signing with rock nation to sort of strong arm and pressure her original record label owners to forego the rights to her album or forego the rights to her as an artist and to sign her up were just all questionable things that i never really agreed with and i guess from that onwards i thought you know what if somebody's willing to do that in order to kind of get out of a deal to lie on purpose to use the media use her fans to kind of um bully um them out into giving her you know into giving her up her kind of contract and give it to rock nation somebody else of course is likely to do something like this now again the issue i think especially if you listen to the album um that tori has because i think he alleges that they were actually in a relationship of some sort they had a lot of feelings for each other he's obviously completely hurt because he feels like you know somebody that he was obviously had a relationship with shouldn't ha shouldn't have basically stabbed him in the back in this way i don't really see in that way i think I think sometimes, especially having read stories regarding people in LA, I just think the energy over there in Hollywood, the fact that your life can suddenly turn for the better um, after a couple of appearances and people, so, you know, you could literally appear in someone's Instagram story and your whole entire career could change for the better in an instant. So I think in that scenario or in that sort of environment, sometimes logic, reason, and just, you know, grown up behavior goes out the window because you're just so you're so kind of grateful and and aware that your career could disappear in an instant as well if you make the wrong move so sometimes when people do some really shady things right in terms of you know throwing their friends under the bus lying about something um contorting the truth making up stories um stealing money whatever i have a little bit of forgiveness and understanding especially if it's happening in la because i just know how cutthroat it is um and people are just doing what they have to do to survive now would i want to purposely put myself in that position no would i ever do that to somebody of course not but i understand how that could happen from the outside looking in so for tory to sit there and be shocked and surprised that somebody like a megan stallion who has everything to lose if this story what he's saying is correct 
right? If what he said happened the way it happened and he didn't shoot her and it was actually the fact that Megan was so blackout drunk, she has no idea what happened that she actually might have ended up shooting herself or something along those lines allegedly, it's obviously going to hamper her career. It's obviously going to affect a lot of deals that she has in the pipeline. Um, and it's actually no coincidence really if you think about it that, you know, subsequent to shooting a lot of her promo um, was really rushed, right? In terms of WAP, in terms of her performance with Twitch or whatever, was it Tidal? Actually, did. a lot of stuff came um, on the back end of that shooting that kind of on the other side of the shooting that makes you think, you know what? There obviously was an understanding that if this goes left, you need to get all these deals out of the way. The, she's got like a makeup thing with Revlon, I think, happening, I saw. So that was always a bit fishy for me. But again, um, talking about the album itself, the album is really good, right? Tory Lane's um, album, I'd say easily it might be up there with one of his better projects, I think, of recent, um, especially when you think of him post uh, getting out of the record label deal, right? I think Chick's Tape was maybe the first, was it the first one? No, that, that was the last, me oh, Chick's Tape was the last album on his record deal, right? It says here, um, Interscope and Mad Love, and then I guess Daystars on One Umbrella, his own um, imprint. So, this is definitely what this is definitely why most artists like getting out record deals especially an artist of his caliber you're able to actually do your own thing you know um move to the beat of your own drum getting your own producers um work with people that you actually want to work with and not get put with people because of political connections and favors all this sort of nonsense happens at record label and then of course the other added side of it is that his back is against the wall right he's essentially in a you know um, life or death situation he's mentioned in the album he's facing up to eight years or something along those kind of lines he has the entire industry against him because essentially he you know he he may be allegedly her a woman and um it just looks like a bad situation we're all in so and no surprise that when you're back against the wall you're definitely going to deliver on your better projects that meme that goes around about your future whenever he breaks up with somebody he puts out his best work isn't unfounded definitely when these kind of artists are put in a position where they're in heartbreak or in sort of distress they are able to somehow channel that into uh, an amazing music because there's part of me that thinks he wouldn't have able i don't think he would have been able to articulate himself this as this strongly this clearly just doing an instagram live i think his artistry and his talent allows him to make songs and make them so thematic and illustrative and just and just really really kind of resonate with the audience more so through music and with instagram live and that's where kind of being able to do your own thing sort of helps and again look at the timing he might have lost his quarantine radio deal and some other deals off the back end but off the back of the sh alleged shooting but the fact that he was able to come off of his you know essentially buy his way out of his masters or, or, or i don't know how it happened actually i don't know if he did do that but however however he finished his, his deal with interscope it happened and then he's in a position now, of course, which is not the best, you know, having this alleged of your head isn't the best thing, but he's also in a position where he can sort of like put out music when he wants, even if he does get canceled, right? He's not in a position where like he can suddenly get stopped from putting music or putting a back burner. But now it's going to hurt him in terms of press. There's been certain outlets have come out and said, oh, we're not going to cover him. And certain people, I'm sure radio stations are going to, you know, use their influence to not put him on rotation. And there's going to be a lot of gatekeepers, you know, sticking their nose in. Um, and a lot of it, I think, has to do with I've been thinking about this a lot. I think it might have to do with the fact that a lot of these same people were the same people that might have turned a blind eye to the whole Rihanna and Chris, uh, Rihanna and Chris Brown situation that happened, you know, a few years back. I think a lot of people, again, that was maybe the first sort of like big, you know, moral decision making thing that people have had to face in that industry in music or intent entertainment especially at that time chris brown and rihanna were both um as equally as loved maybe rihanna more so but it wasn't as if like chris brown was such a social pride that he is now that was chris brown prior to all the madness you know and the controversies and the things he's gone through which he's obviously come out of them the better side but i think a lot of those people who felt like they fell on the wrong side of history are now trying to rewrite their wrongs with this Tory lanes issue because on paper to me it doesn't make any sense one person alleges one thing happened, your person alleges another thing happened. Why is it that one person's believed more than the other? Especially when there's so far the evidence points to the fact that more of, more likely than not, whatever events of the story that Megan's put out there it doesn't necessarily corroborate with the evidence. Right? So far, Tori hasn't been charged with shooting her. So far, we've had no evidence that she even got shot with a bullet directly into her foot, as she mentioned. She got shot in both feet. We had not seen any evidence of it. It suggested she maybe got hurt in one and some shrapnel in the other foot. None of her friends have come out and backed, or none of her friends that were actually there have backed up the story. Um, and it just entirely seems completely fishy. So to suddenly go into a place where, you know, Tory Lanez hasn't spoken once in public since this has happened, right? He says something on the mixtape on the album, sorry. Maybe the album is a bit, you know forceful and a little bit too 
you know direct in some of its nature but i think it needed to be said um you know and it is what it is and now he's being you know essentially torn down for saying so or even releasing the music i think some people out there are alleging that he took away from the tension from the brianna taylor case and you know it's a, just a unfortunate consequence that when he put out the album that you know the verdict for the brianna taylor case was put forth and you know again no one agrees with that verdict no one thinks a young lady minding her own business in her own home and suddenly getting blasted you know by police officers looking for a suspect who they haven't identified visually is any kind of way to deal with anything especially when you consider the charges levied against the officers right one officer got charged one ton what is it one ton derangement or whatever some something stupid case right no no murder no manslaughter so for him to suddenly now be placed under that same sort of company is really 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 disingenuous and really kind of disrespectful to brian teller's legacy right do you know what I mean like he clearly thinks he didn't do nothing wrong he's trying to defend himself because his career is on the line his life is on the line the the future of his family is on the line it's completely understandable why he do that and it's also completely understandable why megan will also want to come out and put her narrative forward too I, I understand it both of them in the industry they have to sort of protect their own uh businesses and again you have to always look at these things especially when you look at a Tory lane especially when you look at how he's evolved over quarantine the quarantine radio and just generally his popularity and megan too these people are not only just artists that you listen to that you like when you add on your playlist they're also entities and brands and corporations in their own right they have a lot of money tied up next to them or associated with them right so the pressure that they have in terms of making sure that they put out their narrative or they spin stuff in a certain way is really really high they have to always do it because there's so literally you know imagine if i think i've said it before like imagine if your agent just bought a bloody new condo right and you moved into it with his new fiance and then suddenly you're getting wrapped up into a shooting incident of course it's going to play into your mind as to how you speak about it in public because you don't want your agents to suffer through your recklessness do you know what i mean so there's loads of issues going in there but i think one of the better um and of course, you know, outlets have kind of been out there besmirching his name. I think the first one to kind of mention is this ridiculous comment on IG by High Um, I don't know why they think they're the authority or they're the place to have any kind of um say so in hip hop culture, to have any sort of say so into who gets to speak and who doesn't, who gets covered, who doesn't. They're essentially a bl a hype blog um you know what a hype blog compilation site they're not even a publication in that respect right they've sort of always been in the shadow of a hype beast um you know i've met a couple of people that work behind the scenes there they're as far associated with hip-hop as as i am associated with martial arts it makes no complete sense but again this is just the the weird sort of like um public jockeying and performance activism people do online just to so that they can protect themselves and make sure that they're on the right side of history in case it goes the way that they want but let's imagine for a, a, a second this court this case goes to court and it's found out on the ledge that megan lied what happens then all of this nonsense all this posturing online makes you look stupid right it's no one's business in the first place now that it's been made public of course f l lend your opinion on the matter but to make a judgment to make a, a a a verdict on the issue is nonsensical especially when you're in a publication that's high society where you 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 are only you're only as strong as the talent that's around on the that's the talent in the industry you're only as strong as whatever you know what i mean you're just a, you're just a news aggregator you don't play any part in moving culture for you just report on the news if you're then going out and you know blackballing a Tory lanes what does that look like to the other artists who else wants to support it again if other artists decide to blackball you you're dead in an instant he isn't because he's got his fan base your fan base is only there because you cover certain things you cover certain brands so it's a really nonsensical way to go about things but this is a statement i said by it said the last time that we will cover Tory lanes it says the rapper just added to his list of disgraceful behavior by dropping the most toxic album of the year he recently became a music industry pariah after making a stadium reveal that he shot her during an incident that led to arrest in july 12th however rather than publicly apologizing to megan or addressing the issue he released an album instead using the media's attention for the shooting to promote his work now obviously that sentence makes no sense right he did publicly address it on the album he didn't do it on instagram live and incriminate himself like some other dancers this was the thing i don't get so people get involved in really tetchy and very life-changing and very dangerous situations and they jump on instagram and the fans are quickly to go oh man why don't you just call the person why are you doing this for why are you doing that for somebody finally decides to use some comment use some rational thinking critical thinking take a deep breath step away from social media and address the allegations on music right? music style as they might have said in Joe Budden podcast and now that's a bad thing I don't see that's a bad thing at all 
if anything, right? Especially if you clearly think you did nothing wrong, what's the issue? There should be no real issue there. Like, if Megan decides to say something on the issue without, you know, um, and quite categorically come out and say he shot her, because she didn't even speak about it in like vague terms. She definitely said his name. Tori's the one that shot her. She alleged that was exactly what happened, how she remembered it. That's fair enough. I'm not here to say whether she's lying or not in that instance. I think, judging by the evidence available, that she probably is, but you're all in your right to say that. So is Tori to defend himself. It shouldn't be that much, shouldn't be that difficult to understand. It says Lane's moves are particularly sickening considering the proximity to his week's role, ruling of the murder of Brianna Taylor again, not his, not his fault. In 1962, Malcolm X, come on. These people are from Berlin, right? They're like, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, I don't understand why suddenly now they're ca they're like, what? Capping for Megan and Stalin and invoking the spirit of Malcolm X. It's insane. Said that the most uh, disrespected person in America is a black woman. Taylor's memory has been used to sell magazine, get clicks, and win political favor. And yet the police officers responsible for her death were not brought to justice. Again, posturing, you know, virtue signaling nonsense. Like, you want, you go to High Snob IE for news about Virgil Abloh's next flipping sneaker collaboration. You don't go for, to them to get a, a, a t to get like an aggregator of what to do in, you know, social issues, like how to think about certain things. That's not what you go to them for. Um, Lanes has used the same logic to promote his album, exploiting the trauma enacted on black women for financial and critical cultural gains, sorry, while refusing to protect them or acknowledge their, cul his, their culpability. Um, that's why you'll never see him on our website or social platforms again again bullshit who cares isn't it no one should care about how somebody covering music i didn't even know they cover music right the website fucking sucks everything the, those high snob shots as well are bloody terrible but again a weird thing to sort of posture on especially considering it's an open case we don't know the truth of the issue is even if he's guilty or not why not wait until the verdict has come out before making a decision makes no sense and again they're shooting themselves in the foot in this case because they're only as strong as the talent they report on so if the talent decide to um turn around and say hey don't cover me you're done you're finished no one wants to listen to you anyway and then this article here from um variety is a really good one it touches really well fairly on both issues it's titled tory lane's denies megan Sally an account of being shot in a highly defensive surprise album i really recommend you check it out um and yeah man i think review wise um i think the album again easily one of his better works i think in terms of the case it's very interesting because he does throw a lot of people under the bus one of the more interesting parts of it is the fact that he alleges that he thinks rock nation might be behind some of the public um sh what the smear campaign against him which is kind of interesting considering Jay-Z standing in the industry that he would be purposely trying to derail Tory Lanez's career in this way, of course, to support his own artist. Now we say Jay-Z because he's, you know, it's, that's, that's his um, label, but obviously we know that there's a lot more people that work there, but you have the feeling when you're, when you're, you know, with Rock Nation that nothing goes, nothing gets done at Rock Nation without Jay-Z's no-so or approval or somehow, right? They don't just go out and do things the way they want to be done. I'm sure he has a touch. He has a, a feeling on everything. I know people always allege that he's always on the internet with the burner account, watching and reading everything. He's, especially when he puts out, you know, records or he does um, features, he always seems to be very on point in knowing what the current lexicon is, what's happening out there. He's not, you know, um, detached from what's going on in the scene. So you could definitely see this happening so that's a very interesting part of it. The other part of it is the fact that um, he alleges that, you know, again, this uh, this alleged issue that Megan might have with alcohol, where she does definitely does go a bit crazy and maybe goes a bit too over the top with it, that might put in compromising positions. Could this be the issue that she was embarrassed that she got into that position? And maybe the underlying part of it, especially when you talk, when you see how um, Tory Lanez referred to Kylie looking like an angel, like a baby in a manger, a little bit cuties reference there. But hey, but that's an interesting part of the story too, right? The fact that these two very powerful, influential, beautiful women in the industry f both felt very uneasy with each other in the same scenario especially when you think about like the video that we first saw of kylie and megan in the pool behind you know and then tory lane's coming up behind them and then suddenly fast forward to the fact that you know tory is alleging that megan got annoyed or got pissed off that tory was flirting with kylie in the pool and stormed out and they didn't realize even at the time but you know that's what basically caused the whole altercation that led to the shooting allegedly that's another part of the interesting part of the story right that these these two people had a what a uh, a uh, pre-existing issue prior to them going over or was it more so sort of a thing of like you know two hot girl energies can't be in the same place at the same time regardless that's another interesting part of the story 
And of course, him going after everybody that besmirched his name from J.R. Writer to Marl on the Joe Budden podcast to Jojo to Kalani. Everyone got it in their head. And I really appreciate that. The fact that he went so direct to name people because too often you get all the subliminals and the innuendos and sort of the beef in terms of hip hop. But to suddenly have someone that kind of is pulling people's cards and saying, hey, I heard what you said, you know, um, I'm here is amazing. And then seeing the backlash and seeing the kind of um, the... The, the consequence of this like you know now he's suddenly got a beef an issue with Bumby um, now he's got an issue now with Rick Ross has kind of come out and then another surprising villain or another opponent of Tory Lanez during his whole debacle is Halsey Halsey now comes out and, and slammed Tory Lanez and says here uh, Tory Lanez calls uproar across social media on Thursday night when he teased that he would be finally breaking silence after Meng Salin um Instead of coming clean, he, which he did in the album, the rapper and singer whose real name is Daystar Peterson, I've heard a seven track album called Daystar with the lead track Money of a Fallouts featuring the line, Gotta see a couple questions. Um, how the fuck you get shot in the foot but don't hit no bones and tendons? And again, that's a genuine question. That's the odd thing I hate about this whole case. You can't ask questions. I get the whole believe we women. Um, idea i get the idea that hey you, we should kind of not be put you shouldn't be in a place where you're victim shaming straight off the bat but you can ask questions you're allowed to right you're allowed to ask a question as to why a person will put themselves in a dangerous position then if it transpires out of that questioning that they didn't put themselves in a position just an unlucky situation that led to them being negatively affected then cool all sympathy to that issue but you're allowed to ask questions as to why certain things happen the way that they did especially when you know you know the anatomy you know about how many bones are in the foot for somebody to get shot directly in both feet and not hit any bones and tenders makes no sense especially considering how she went about after right the fact that she was so defensive on instagram live whenever people question the fact that she's injured and the posting of her foot then the in it going to clubs wearing a bandage not wearing a bandage just like what is with all these games and it just doesn't make sense anyway continues uh megan's people trying to frame me for shooting knowing i didn't do it i'm coming at the, my truest he also claims despite the controversy they saw reached number one on us apple music which was announced as a tweet on friday Halsey, who often supports victims of abuse on the platform quickly came to her defense again it's quickly coming to the defense thing, man. It's going to bite everyone in the back sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later, somebody that everyone loves is going to get involved in a very questionable um, allegation, right? One that's really going to touch people. Remember when Lena Dunham came out and defended her writer colleague who was accused of sexual assault and then she came out really hard against a woman and then it got, you know, proven the fact that she was actually telling the truth and she made it made Lena Dunham look stupid? The same thing is going to happen to these people who are like believe a woman. One day something really dark is going to happen and it's not going to be true and everyone's going to be looking really, really dumb. Anyway, she says here, she holds you tweeted a thing, says, I'm sorry, but I really can't believe whoever is listening to this and letting this man speak on or profit from his violence towards somebody who we know and love. Now, again, if the case, if it's true, and again, this is the thing with cancel culture, I kind of agree with cancel culture, right, in some way, shape or form. If you're not able to... Um, seek justice right through the court system and your only way is to publicly um cancel somebody right to kind of tarnish their name to run hashtags every day to leave derogatory comments on their instagram posts run a free do what you want but if the if the market decides that they want to buy their tickets enjoy their music you can't then go out your way to stop those people attending those shows calling in bomb press what sort of stuff that's our line but if you're more if you want to publicly dismiss their name and go out there and pick it outside their shows have banners up there um if you've got your own platform and you don't want to cover them cool do your thing but wait until we go to the go to the court of law and it's decided with what happened or inspired then you can make your decision but to stand there and all mikey say that he can't make music he can't have a career he can't support his family based off allegations is nuts absolutely nuts especially when you think of how um how um how up in the air the whole thing was right they were all drunk they were all probably high they were all living life and a really unfortunate incident happened to believe anyone's account of the story is insane no matter how traumatic it is right we need to have time for people to assess the information from a neutral point of view and come to sort some sort of decision like I, I don't know would you ever take somebody's i don't know it's hard, like can you remember everything that happened when you have a really big night out with your friends and you get a bit hammered it's hard to cut to find any kind of way to piece together what the night's actions were now get it, if it's a traumatic event you could probably it comes to the front of your mind but let's just take a bit of a breath here 
So again, I don't mean to she's coming from. She said, Meg is yet to respond to Lane's album. She said, yes, sorry, Latane, shot me. You shot me. You got your publicists and people to go on these blogs lying, which is definitely not true. She, if any, if anyone's doing um, PR work behind the scenes, it's definitely her. Um, stop lying. Why we lie? I don't understand. And again, I understand why you lie. I understand why people lie in general, right? You have to protect your interest. Um, you don't want to be put in a position where you're having to tell the truth. The, sometimes lying is easier than telling the truth. I get it. I understand it, especially in Hollywood. It makes complete sense. You're in the record industry. You've got, you know, your suddenly this because you know controversy i would say i don't really think her music matches up to her notoriety in that respect when it comes to megan the stallion and you're very aware that you know your career could be gone in an instant a new girl comes along you know mulatto's doing pretty well um sweetie's um having a, a bit of a moment it's not you know people think people in music have very short memory so you need to do everything that you can to maintain your position right to build upon what you have and you don't want it to be taken away from you because you know how hard you worked for it so i understand what people like but i'm also understanding that you know i'll let the court case play out as it may be and then if the decision is made in the courts that you can agree with and people can move on and whatever they can do fair play because what happens again this is the other issue same thing happened with chris brown and rihanna rihanna got over the chris brown thing quicker than the fans did right she even said recently in another interview that they still are quite good friends to this day what happens if Megan Thee Stallion forgives Tori for whatever allegedly did or did not happen and they move on and decide to be a couple or decide to be friends again how how do you move on there can he still not be covered is he still not allowed do you have to wait until Megan gives you permission before you listen to his music again it's just all so stupid all so silly and again an unfortunate state of affairs for everybody involved but again um I really enjoyed the album I thought it was easily one of his best works um it kind of plays really well from front to back musically it definitely shows off his range that's probably something that we've all kind of been wanting from a toy lanes album i think this definitely delivers on that fact again no surprise that he's back is against the wall and suddenly he pulls out this album from his ass right really 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 impressive songwriting melodies different styles again just showcases just how much of a talent he is and again if this goes to prove that he then is guilty of what he's done fair enough we'll revisit and make another decision on the case but as it stands with just allegations out there and no real evidence to prove that he did or didn't do it i'm going to join the music for what it is and keep it moving and to the fans that are going out there out of their way to ride for one person or the other like just let the dust settle it's no one's business we don't know what happened four people in the car they know exactly what the truth is the police will get down to the bottom of it you're hoping in some way especially when they involve celebrities in la they always sort of they always for the most part figure it out when it's people when it's when, when they that's, that's, that's the thing too when it involves pedestrians or ever you know civilians sorry that's when it becomes an issue right but when it involves celebrities they, they always get down to the bottom of it right you can you can bet your bottom dollar if nipsey hustle wasn't a hip-hop star they probably wouldn't have ever found out who ever killed him right but the fact that he was beloved in his industry so beloved in his community beloved in the industry and just generally a really cool dude in the scene people went out of their way to really try and find out and get to the bottom of this especially because they you know i'm sure the police were very aware of the negative reaction that would have come from if they didn't find the killer you know a, a pending gang war i think people did die off the back of that of, of him unfortunately passing as well so you you're of the feeling that it's when it involves two high profile people in LA they're definitely going to get down to the bottom of it and we'll finally find out what exactly happened on that night but as as what we have at the moment Daystar is available streaming down all platforms I guess and again one of my better albums I've listened to in the scene uh, for a while especially off of um, Tory Lane so definitely go and check that out but again let me know your thoughts on it what do you think do you think Megan is having now listened to the album whose side of the story do you believe um, let me know in it and again um do you think Kylie looks like a baby in a manger? I don't know, but hey, let me know down below your thoughts and opinions on that one. Moving on, um, what else do we have to talk about? Oh, oh, another development in the Brian, Brian Callen um, v. Sexual Assault um, accusers debacle that's um, gripped the comedy scene, gripped the podcast scene, or in generally negative affected him. I don't think anyone else cares outside of people that watch the stuff that I put out, but God damn it, man. What an, what a shit show. What a shit show of a situation. So I, I mentioned prior on shows that I think in general that he probably went about this the wrong way. You know, Brian Callen being accused by four separate women of um, some sexual crime here, you know, some very variation of a sexual assault. One alleges rape. Other people uh, allege, you know, um, unwanted attention, groping, all this sort of nonsense. Um, and the allegations were serious enough for him to get 
essentially pulled off his podcast, not allowed to record in the same studio as Brian or Brendan or not be on camera with him, has to do a show behind a uh, a pay one patron, lost his Netflix deal with Chris D'Elia, of course, makes sense because Chris D'Elia's got his own situation going on and has essentially been ousted or excommunicated from the comedy scene overall. Joe Rogan hasn't mentioned him ever since the allegations arose. It's been completely mute on Brian Callan in that respect. And, you know, he's had to essentially suffer on the outskirts um whilst these allegations are running rampant in the scene and um he decides of course the best way to do it is to sort of kind of attack it go on the front foot um put put it out there that he didn't do it put out there that the, the allegations are false and he's going to clear his name but he doesn't clear his name and now i don't know how he's going to clear his name because some of the allegations are more than 20 years old but surely the best way to go about this isn't to just jump back onto cameo isn't to do a podcast behind a patreon isn't to suddenly have a Callan report at podcast, you know, um, under the premise that you are going to do a fight in the ring stack is pulled because cast media are your overlords and then you do an entire bait and switch and get Sam Tripoli involved who you know I'm sure the fan base of the fan kid have no business to listen to because it's not really a conspiracy podcast in that respect so it's been an entire shit show after shit show after shit show after shit show and then you think about it in context and you think Considering all the times that they've been on their show, The Final Kid, and they've spoken about cancel culture issues and people in media going through, um, you know, allegations um, regarding Me Too, you'd think they have a better idea and a better um, way of dealing with the situation. Because I can only think if this happened to Brendan, this would be even worse of a situation, right? The way he goes on and how he talks and how he's so reckless with the things that he's saying, he doesn't really think about how he puts information out there or how he even formulates sentences. It's just surprising to me how shitty they've handled this, considering how much, how strong of opinion they have when other people are going through certain things and how they deal with it. And um, in Brian Callan's case, it's only gone from bad to worse now, because supposedly the husband of one of the women who um, is uh, claiming that Brian Callan raped her, he is now suing, and that person has now launched a GoFundMe in order to cover his legal cost. So if, if this drama couldn't get any more embarrassing couldn't get any more excruciating for the victims is it allegedly a victims it's all getting played out in public again it's just got even worse where this kind of um public back and forth between uh gabriel tigerman i think his name is and brian cannon it's a really really ridiculous situation to be involved in i guess if you're brian cannon especially considering you know the fact that I think this is all self-inflicted for the most part. But anyway, this is Los Angeles Times. Here, Brendan Callan, Sue's husband of women who claimed he, um, the comedian raped her. Says, yeah, Brian Callan is suing the husband of a woman who claims the comedian raped her, arguing his spouse, her spouse, sorry, is out to ruin his career. On Wednesday, Callan filed a complaint in Los Angeles Superior Court alleging that Gabriel Tigerman has launched an ongoing campaign to destroy the comic's livelihood via threats of harassment, intimidation, and third parties that dare contact him. Tigerman is married to Kathleen Fior Tigerman, um, who in July told the LA Times in 1999 that Callan held her down in bed and forced her to have sex with him. She was one of the four women who claimed that Callan had sexually inappropriate with him, uh, with them saw in a story that described his alleged assault, misconduct and disturbing comments. Callan adamantly denied all the women's stories and stressed that their encounter with Fiori had been consensual. On social media, he quickly vowed to lay low and promising his fans that he wouldn't post a statement and disappear. Now, the statement and disappear thing is odd, isn't it? I think, because I, I guess... The problem that he has maybe is that he's looking at it through the lens of cancel culture, which it isn't. This is somebody alleging that you did something sexually inappropriate to them. It's not the same thing as cancel culture. So when you're looking at it through the lens of cancel culture, I, I can understand the, the tendency or the desire to defend yourself and to go out there and, and rewrite the wrongs and kind of change the narrative. But if, if we learned anything from people's other people's scandals, it doesn't work. You can't defend yourself in public. It doesn't always backfire, especially if it's some, in anything involving a woman and a man, especially when the, the man's the one being alleged to have done a crime. You have to deal with it a bit more sensitive sensitivity and be understanding of the climate and maybe do lay low um you know i look at somebody like a Neil deGrasse tyson when he got accused of something and he had to kind of let it play out let the let the um network i think it might have been cbs something do an internal investigation um you know decide what they want to do and then whatever decision they make you accept and you move on right they kind of close the chapter but you don't go and rubbing people's face in it into decision making wise you don't go on shows and be cry social media be cry the perils of social media and sort of criticize me too and attack prominent figures within the you know women empowerment movement you don't do that stuff because any because even if you're in your right even if you're accurate you know 
defending yourself you know for the benefit of your family is always going to make you look bad and if anything it's going to empower other people who have have other questionable experiences with you to come out and add further fuel to a fire to bury you completely so that's where i think he really fucked up in that respect he saw it through the lens of cancel culture thought he could defend himself and be on the front foot and instead it's only gone and kicked and bit him in the back um, it continues, or oh, picking the back side, sorry. Um, though he has taken a leave of absence for his podcast, which again, he didn't really take. If you think you look at it properly, he didn't take the leave of absence. The cast media are the ones that told him he couldn't go back on the show, right? They essentially are the ones that approved the sponsorships of the show, I think, for the most part. They handle that side of things. I don't think they've handled production. Someone said that they don't really probably do that. Chin probably handles that himself. But they, they are responsible for getting the sponsors involved. And I guess if you're fired a kid and you don't want to do that sort of stuff and you're too busy comics, it makes sense to sign up with cast media, right? Because they just handle all that sort of stuff they kind of remind me a little bit of machinima in that respect remember that sort of like what were they what were they mcm right on youtube that basically took a cut of people's um google adsense money but then put them in contact with big brands and sponsorships and whatever it may be so that makes sense if you're a big comedian and you're touring all over the place it, you know running a podcast on your own probably is a lot of work even though joe rogan does it without the help but you know he's got ben pick your souls that help that does the same sort of thing so i can understand it but Essentially, Cast Media definitely told us to not go on the podcast. We continue, said, The Fire and the Kid, Callan has continued to book up a coming stand-up states despite the fact that he was dropped by his Hollywood representative, the CAA, one of the biggest entertainment um, uh, agencies out there. They've got a pretty good book at the moment out as well. At the moment, if you want to check it out, it definitely it talks about you know the founding of CAA, um, and essentially they are the power brokers in that industry, right? They actually pre when they press the button, you go up, right? And you know many comedians know as soon as you're signed up with a CAA or WME, your career is definitely on the ascendancy. It continues here. It says, "I'm Canon, best known for his role at ABC, The Goldbergs, and Schooled, was also set to make a Netflix prank show with his comic Chris Elia, but the program was scrapped. Um, scrapped, sorry, after the day was accused of sexual assault too. So again." you you know you don't deal with it the right way you get off your podcast your date and then you announce dates which is also always a bit of a thumbing of the nose to allegations in that respect right you should always you know probably take your take yourself out of the limelight and treat this allegation with some sort of severity but again he didn't do that it says upon learning of Callum's future gigs Gabriel Tigman reached out via email to Twitter to a number of the comedy clubs that booked Callum on September 11th Tigman tweeted that the venues were sending a very clear message that they support and sexual abusers and don't believe victims by hosting Callum's shows his message garnered support from other prominent voices comedy world including Jen Kirkman who said she would donate five pounds to five dollars sorry to the rape abuse um incest um national national network each is a nasty place and a nasty network to be part of imagine telling your friends where you work i work at the rape abuse incest national network that's mad on behalf of any of my persons who told um the indians indiana's helium comedy club that they are disappointed that they are booking a credibly alleged rapist but he's not right he's a he's not he's not a um he's not a credibly alleged rapist he is a lead rapist that's his difference and again I don't really have an issue with Gabriel Tigerman doing this, what he's doing for his wife, right? You're going to be ride or die for your partner. You believe your partner is what it is. I guess, you know, his loyalties are always going to be to his wife. He's never going to question her account of things. Even if it's proven that Karen is innocent, I would imagine he'll still be like, no, he's guilty. I understand that. I get it. Love is involved there. But there's a part of me that thinks you can say what you want on social and kind of publicly besmirch his name but purposely reaching out to places and calling up and telling him not to book him is really really going over the top i think in that respect i think you should let it play out as it is for the most part he's essentially been excommunicated most of these dates he booked probably wouldn't have sold out anyway the fact that he kept promoting them because that's another tip as well just keep your eye on that one the fact that he kept had to promote them in the first place he knew that if he didn't promote them no one's going to buy the tickets to them think about the shows that louis ck done in the wake of his allegations he just put them out there and people just attended right they most of the tickets sold out he did an entire tour he put out a comedy album that did really well i'd assume because he so, kind of put it out directly for his own site so i think those kind of guys at that level of notoriety can do that but when you're brian cannon unfortunately he knows that most of his fan base or most of the tick sales that he got was directly attributed to the work that he did on the fire and the kid and the fact that he's not on the fire and the kid and the fact that he's out of sight out of mind naturally fans move on so he's very conscious of that that's why he went on his show on patreon which definitely led to all this stuff right the fact that he announced it in public led to all of this stuff because i don't think those people would have known that he did shows if he didn't announce them so he announced them he put it out there and essentially um he shot himself in the foot in that regard so he's going to skirt himself to blame but i do think it is going too far to contact the clubs directly i think jen kirkman gabriel tigerman they're more than you know you're more than your right to go out there and put a statement online leave a comment underneath the tweets or something i don't know whatever you want to do but calling them up or threatening to you know um 
I don't know, threatening a bomb threat, whatever, allegedly. I wouldn't say they did it, but let's say something along those kind of lines. That's when you're going over the top. It says here, the Times confirmed on Wednesday that four locations, the Brickyard Comedy Club in Oklahoma, Skyline Comedy Club in Appleton, Wise Guys in Spokane, um, sorry, so the Spokane Comedy Club and the DC Improv in Washington recently pulled kind of shows from their schedules again considering that he has a family to look after right and he has a wife to look after who happens to be a woman <laughs> it's really ironic that these same people that are like you know um saying counterculture doesn't exist are also the ones that are you know essentially taking food off the plate food off the table of somebody that's trying to support their you know daughter and their kind of ex-wife in that sort of respect you know that's always interesting anyway it continues um callan blames the cancellation on these gigs on tickman's reg for interference according to his lawsuit which again is a little bit obfuscating obs ob obfuscating the truth yeah whatever that term is because part of the reason why his data got cancelled is because he put himself in a position where he could get alleged where you know where he could be alleged of those crimes that he's alleged of right it's only his fault really the fact that these things have happened now he could say no they're not true the allegations but you can't blame the the just because these things happen as a consequence of some actions that you might have done in the past don't mean it's the person's fault that these things happen i'd say in that regard if that makes any sense he says i'm driven by a false allegation that callan assaulted his wife over 20 years ago mr tickman has sent and continues to send mr callan representative and others direct demands that they cease doing business with him or else falsely brand support of sexual assault now again i'm thinking about it as well if part of me thinks if you're callan right just let this thing ride out it's this is not done in good this is not done in um this is not done in good faith. This is obviously a bad thing. Um, I think, you know, we can all say that's the thing, right? You can't go around trying to ruin somebody's business opportunities because you think a certain thing happened, right? You have to let it go out, play out in the court systems in some way, shape or form. Now, if we get to the point where you can't, you can't, you know, you can't convict somebody in a court of law because these cases are more than, you know, two decades old, fair enough. Then sometimes, you know, you have to do what you have to do. But, part of me thinks if you're Callan, do you really should it, is it really wise to sue somebody off the back of some of this stuff especially considering the allegations wouldn't it be wouldn't it kind of help his position further if he just came out and said hey i understand what you're doing right i get it you're protecting your wife but um i would ask that you kind of give me the chance to support my family in any way shape i can um you know especially when you consider that i haven't in charge of anything and if i do get formally charged you're more than willing and more than able you're more than your rights to keep continuing to cancel my career but as is especially considering the times we're living in now give me the chance to make money and support my family you, you i think that that could be a fair enough um, reaction and people could understand okay cool that's that's fair but to go out there and publicly try and tarnish somebody especially once but there's, no, there's only allegations out there is maddening isn't it but again callan should he be suing somebody i don't think so none of the four clubs that scrapped callan's gigs responded to the questions for the times ca innovative both declined to comment in a statement provided by his lawyer andrew baum callan said he filled a lawsuit because i take my innocence and reputation right to due process very seriously and i will not stand by it while somebody tries to destroy my livelihood over something i did not do fine but it's interesting that he's suing the husband and not the, and not the actual women that alleged his stories isn't it i'm guessing some of these stories are true in terms of they had an encounter but then he probably alleges that the actual incident sexual assault didn't actually happen i don't know who who knows um and then yeah here's the guys go fund me and at the moment of speaking let's refresh it so far he's on twenty five thousand, right and he's halfway to approaching his goal which you'll probably end up getting and some of the donations um from the people um on the side are really funny you know a lot of the, a lot of the names are purposely um trolly i says right i can't talk of course you know where that comes from dicey dicey b a lot of um homeless cats in the <laughs> in the comments here leaving donations and i think the funny and unfortunate side of this issue is that because of the backlash that these guys especially brendan and brian got because of their reaction to covid and how they dealt with it when they got covid and just generally how the podcast has kind of dipped and um they've kind of turned into people who their fans don't necessarily like anymore especially some of the detractors quote unquote um they're using this opportunity to actually bury callan which is funny because out of the two of them you'd consider callan to be the one that's probably the more liked within the fan base even from some of the people that hate the show now i think callan still gets a lot more benefit of doubt even the fans that hate the show say you know they should get callan back on it right just for the benefit of the show going forward because brendan with guests is just terrible right now it's got better because he's kind of you know learned to listen to people speak a little bit more um especially the malik and Chappelle lacy they were really good guests but so you know so far it's been a bit hit and miss with brendan doing on his own um but anyway in general when callan's on his own before he's been a bit hit and miss too so they need each other to make it work but that's the unfortunate side of things right callan's just you know 
not reckless, but the fact that he's been so defensive in the weird, in the wrong way, because he's looking at it through the prism of cancel culture, he's essentially made this situation worse for himself. And now we're in a position where fans are, you know, um, actively look at this. Yeah, Brendan Schlob, Jesus Espinosa, um, another anonymous. You got here. You got here. Allworded dot com, which again, this is a, I think it's a website that they kind of, if you go on T five K, it kind of links back to that website right um all these people that essentially want to see those guys get buried who think you know brendan shouldn't deserve a stand-up career and that he's only there because of his friends with rogan all these people are the ones that are now going out and publicly trying to end their career so again what an unfortunate state of affairs what an unfortunate event in all of it and again there's in the midst of all this there are alleged victims who are just you know having all these things play out their stories and their traumas replayed out in public Kellen out there trying to make his career pop again, um, not really understanding the current climate that's going out there. And um, yeah, man, just mad nonsense. And again, and if, if ever there was a cautionary tale of, not, of how not to deal with allegations, this is it. This is definitely the one. Like, don't deal with it in this way because it's, it never really ends well. So yeah, um, let me know your comments are, man, regarding this. What do you think? Um, do you think Brian's overstepping the mark by trying to sue this Gabriel Tigerman. Do you think Gabriel Tigerman was in his, like, does Gabriel Tigerman come out this looking anyway bad? The fact that he's crowdsourcing funds from strangers to support a court case that's his own doing as well, right? He went out of his way to publicly defend his wife and contact people and do things that were probably over the top. So why is he now asking for help from strangers? Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? Um, again, the the wife that's involved, she's actually the one that was a victim, and this is quiet and just suffering in silence. It's just, it's just horrible having to imagine having to relive this trauma, like especially publicly in this way. It's just mad, isn't it? Absolutely mad. But yeah, let me know your thoughts um, are regarding the situation in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you're saying regarding everything that's happening. Um, again, it's it's interesting to see how this see this how this plays out. But again, in my opinion, I definitely think this is a good lesson. And you know that thing is it? This is how you don't play. Those sort of compilations of really shitty computer game players out there like DSP and what's the other guy? Wings of Redemption is that his name? Wings or something? Whatever. Yeah, it's like that kind of thing, isn't it? If this if that is do not this is this is how you don't play. This is how you don't respond to allegations, right? Or react to allegations, especially when they're involving a sexual in their nature. You just can't go about it this way. This is just horrible horrendous way to deal with it and again he only has himself to blame really even if he's innocent he only has himself to blame he put his family his friends through in a really um shitty position in how he's dealt with it really you know, in my in my in my opinion but hey maybe there's more information will come to light maybe i'm completely off the mark here but i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below anyway that is it, I think, of the Exynos English Show, episode number 379. As per usual, thanks so much for tuning in. If it's your first time watching via the podcast show, via YouTube, make sure you smash the like button, hit subscribe in the comments down below. If you're listening via the podcast, like, please give me a five-star review, download the show and share it with your friends. Um, and of course, if you want to support the show via Patreon, the link is down below to you. Patreon.com, fortunately, I can see you know, it's Patreon.com, fortunately, it's A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O. You can get this whole podcast in audio format before it goes out anywhere else on Patreon. So make sure you sign up on there. Don't delay. Sign up now. What are you waiting for? But until then, take care. Peace.